Do you want a bank that talks sustainable growth or walks it? The series is brought to you by Nedbank Corporate and Investment Banking. With me now is Tabang Mathlangu, who is automotive lead and also lead on transport, freight and logistics at Nedbank Corporate and Investment Banking. We're talking electric vehicles and where we are as South Africa in the electric vehicle journey. Let's start there. Thank you very much, uh, Bronwyn, uh, for the opportunity to talk to you today. I think in terms of where we are as a country on the road to electric vehicle uh, mass adoption, we, I would characterize where we are as infancy. We really are at infancy um, because we don't as yet have the uh, policy frameworks and the legislative frameworks to stimulate mass EV adoption, right? Um, electric vehicles provide such a big opportunity for uh, green awareness for, 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 for um, uh, the community, but it also gives an, an opportunity for us to adopt um, technologies that are for the future, right? Whether we're talking in the consumer space, for myself and your, or yourself uh, purchasing cars, or whether we're talking about mass mobility in the bus sector or in the heavy vehicle uh, uh, sector in terms of uh, uh, trucks um, and that sort of thing. Electric vehicle really is the technology uh, of the future, and we as South Africa, as a result of the uh, the uh, legislative uh, and policy frameworks, are really at infancy. That's how I would characterise it. Now, Tabang, what is going to catalyse those policy frameworks to come to fruition quickly to help us in this journey? Yeah, I think the the, the custodian of uh, policy uh, uh, frameworks, of course, is 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 uh, legislative in nature. So the government has a big role uh, to play in that space. I think we have a lot of lobbying from um, uh, bodies within the automotive value chain, in particular NAMSA, that has really tried to push. Um, from really looking at the economic impacts of the South Africa's automotive industry transitioning towards EV. So the lobbying is there. The lobbying is there from us as financial services providers and, and, and banks that will fund some of these uh, activities in order to stimulate the discussions with, 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 with uh, uh, government. Um, and it will take that will, really. We've seen in other industries, for example, in the power industry with the IPPs, what uh, the might of the pen was in terms of opening those industries up um, uh, to other players outside of the, the dominant um, uh, electricity provider in South Africa. So we need that sort of will, we need le that sort of uh, legislative uh, 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 push from a policy framework perspective that will catalyze uh, the acceleration towards that. That's on the one side. Just, just let's pause there for a moment. The electric vehicle industry would that ultimately land up being a huge threat to the automotive industry as we see it today in South Africa? I don't think it's a, it's a threat. I think it's actually an opportunity to grow new skills and grow new industries or sub-industries within uh, 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 the country. It's an opportunity for us to skill our engineers and technicians in the technologies of, of the future. It's an opportunity for fresh investment into manufacturing uh, in, 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 in the country. Of course, um, you know, there are issues around just transitions in, in, in some of these uh, uh, topics that that need to be uh, managed. I think we can have a parallel process uh, where both sides of, in terms of ice, ICE, internal combustion engines and electric vehicles, and uh, I guess in fairness, other types of um, uh, combustion uh, engines to the future, they can coexist and walk the journey really um, in, in, into um, uh, the future. Um, in the electricity space, as an example, people thought that, but we've got all these uh, IPPs that have come that have actually created jobs technical jobs, tech-heavy jobs that prepare us in order to, 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 to support the skills development of, of, of the country across uh, the, the spectrum. So my belief is that there, there's a coexistence that can happen there. What are the other mobility solutions being tabled at the moment? Are there some half measures in, in terms of electric vehicles? Mm -hmm. So if we look at hydrogen and 
other elements being thrown into the equation? Yeah, so, so hydrogen is a recent topic. I think we, we, we heard at Sona for the first time, I think this year or last year, around the green hydrogen economy and how that can be a potential or alternative source of energy um, in, in the space. From a hydrogen perspective, I think when I said EVs are at infancy, we are I, I don't know. Way, what, way before way, even way infancy. Way before infancy uh, on, on, on hydrogen. A um, lot of investment has to happen in that space in order to, to, to stimulate. Um, there's obviously hybrids uh, uh, as, as, as a means. Uh, my view is that hybrids are not electric vehicles, right? It's, 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 a, it's a petrol or a diesel engine. Um, the, the hybrid nature of it is really minimal in terms of the green agenda, right? In terms of its impact. Impact. Um, so, so, so for me, a hybrid is is is, is an ICE engine uh, uh, by and large. It will not move the needle exponentially from an emissions perspective, um, and and that sort of thing. So, so I really think that while there may be alternative energy uh, 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 potential, the West. Um, and the U.S. are going electric. The East has already gone far down the line in terms of, if we look at how China um, has been so progressive in terms of their electric vehicle, right? Bus systems in major cities in, in China, fully electric uh, from a rail perspective and EV adoption. I think it's one of the largest markets for EV outside of the Euro block itself. So um, I think in order for the competitive, for us to remain competitive, we really need to focus on on, on EV as uh, if we're looking at a pie, the EV pie, the EV slice of the pie will be the largest going forward, larger than hydrogen and or hybrids and that kind of thing. And we need to push that. So Tabang, when we look at transport uh, companies, logistic companies, they have extensive fleets within their operations. Surely that could be used to catalyze this transition to electric vehicles um, relatively quickly. Absolutely, uh, Bronwyn. I think uh, fleets, uh, because of their buying power, um, and by the way, when we talk of fleets, there's the government and non-government fleets, right? So there's certain parastatals and government departments that have massive fleets um, that they can use to lead in terms of EV, mass EV adoption, right? So for example, if you've got a large fleet that's got a, a thousand plus vehicles, they could KPI themselves to say, in the next three years, we would like 10% of the fleet to, um, to, to be electric uh, vehicles. And they could work with the OEMs that I mentioned about in terms of sourcing those vehicles and then go through some sort of fleet transformation um, uh, process that will give a balance. This will also give them the opportunity to take test the real life um, uh, total cost of ownership aspects, right? Because fleet uh, customers are really looking at total cost of ownership. And is the assumption fair to say that EV is still way more expensive than your traditional motor vehicle, your combustion engine? E EVs have actually come down in terms of um, the total cost of ownership, right? So the acquisition cost is one thing, but the total cost of ownership refers to the maintenance of the vehicle over a span of time, so parts replacement and that sort of thing, right? It's actually, we're seeing more emerging research that's showing us that the, the total cost of ownership for EVs is actually becoming more and more um, uh, attractive. So the differential in terms of that is, uh, is becoming less and less in terms of the total cost of ownership. And once we have the policy framework and the incentive framework uh, in place, that should drive it further down. We're seeing the price of batteries in general going down, which is a big input cost, just like an engine would be a big input cost to an internal combustion engine uh, uh, vehicle. All of the, the, the scale that the EV environment is getting is driving costs down over time. Tabang, thank you so much. Great chatting to you. I've been chatting to Tabang Mahlangu, who is lead on the automotive and transport logistics and freight here at Nedbank Corporate and Investment Banking. Do you want a bank that talks sustainable growth or walks it? The series is brought to you by Nedbank Corporate and Investment Banking.